been quite a while, but I've been asked to do several more tutorials. And what people were uh, wanting me to do is to walk them through a song. Uh, so I just posted Benny King's classic, Stand By Me, uh, 1961. It's been covered over 400 times, 400 different single releases of that song. Um, and it's a very, very simple song, but it's very involved with the bass. It's the bass and a little kick, a uh, little hi-hat maybe on the, uh, on the drums. But here we are alone with the guitars. So the basic is... If you've been with me so far, you know you need your capo. So if I'm going to do any of the, the singing, I've got to get it all the way up here to about the third capo. Once you put your capo on, please remember, push each of the strings down individually, a little bit, and you will find that most of the time they're in tune if you've got the right capo. Uh, this is a Thalia. They're rather expensive, but they are very, very good. They have inserts for whatever kind of guitar you've got. Uh, but there are so many, I and Kaiser, and just and find what works for you, all right? I've seen people actually use pencils with rubber bands holding them on, seriously, and it, it's worked great. So we're up here now. I do not use, uh, I, don't, I do not have, um, there we are on that side, I do not have long fingernails at all, um, and I don't use a pick. If you use a pick, you can do all kinds of amazing, wonderful things, so I'm not anti-pick. Remember, I taught myself on a 12-string guitar, which is a very silly thing to do, but I was um, living on my own, traveling about, nobody knew, and this is the day before internet and before books, really, that you could find, except for every so often an odd Mel Bay book. Uh, and they were odd. <clears throat> you ever had one? They were horrible little things. Anyway, um, so how are we going to do this? I strike down with uh, these two fingers, but it doesn't matter what you strike down with. This just works for me. And then on the way back up, I'm hitting with the side of my thumb. Now that's a very full sound. Our chords for this could not be simpler. G, E minor, C, then D. But we're even going to make it a bit simpler because we don't need all six strings. If you're going to do this, boom, 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 you, you just need the lower ones. So I do make a change here. First of all, the G. Same G that you've hit. If you've learned how to do your G like this, stop it. Um, it's nice to know in an emergency. And you can even then get your G with that little add D. You know, and that's, that's, that's a good chord. You want this because it allows you to do so much more without moving your, your entire hand, slinging it about the place. Let's be lazy, right? But if we're only gonna do, and again, you don't have to mute the bottom two strings. You don't have to take off the bottom two strings and hide them in a jar in the garage. No, all you have to do is concentrate on the top here. Now, there's not a lot of space between my strings and the fretboard. I like to get it almost as close as I can without any buzz. And there's no buzz, but they're very low. If you're a flat picker, you want them just a little higher because you get more volume that way. Uh, if you're a finger picker, down below is very nice. Well, I'm a finger picker, but I'm strumming. I still want them down because I want that slap. All right, notice it's an up, down, up, down, up, down, but you don't have to hit it every time. You only make a sound when the beat wants you to make a sound. So the, um, the entire song goes like this. G. And you can then walk it up. Like, but the way I do it is just walk that in, uh, work that into. Then walk it down. D minor. And I lift off. 
goes in the bass of the real song, it drops a bit more. Well, there's not that much room on the guitar to do that. So instead, I get that, that little auditory hint. And by lifting, it cuts it off. Listen to it. See that? Then we go to C. Now, C's are made like this, but I don't want you to make your C like that this time. Not if you're going to do it this way, where you really hit the bass. I want you to make your C this way. And we've covered this before, I believe, on one of them. But this gives you that full C, but especially for our, our purposes. These bottom four strings, they really, they need to be hit. So we're going to walk all the way to the C again. on purpose. I'm lifting off a little bit. You don't have to be crazy. You don't have to throw them out here. In fact, your fingers don't have to leave the strings. You just quit pushing. Remember when you're starting to play guitar, everything sounds like this? And then whenever you finally get it, it's like magical. It happens one day, right? See, so that's what you're looking for. So that... Go G, E minor, C, and then we're going to do something a wee bit different, right? Here we go. Now, what in the world is this? This is a D. I know this is a D. You've learned it in all your chord books, and you are correct, and it's beautiful. We've learned that, but... I'm, I'm not using any of these. It is perfectly fine for you to be using. You can play the song. And it is beautiful and wonderful. But if you want to learn how to do that, like you've got a band up behind you doing the bass, you can make your D. That E string, this last string here, second fret, and then the third string, second fret. And you just don't hit the other ones. There will be many times in your life where you will want that bass transition. You can't have that unfretted with a D. So we just really emphasizing these top two strings, right? The D and the A. Right now it's an F because I'm holding that down and that A. But I can, if I slip and go further, I'm not going to go all the way down to there, which would sound really, really bad. Just a pro tip here. This is that lower D, but what if you want to do a little bit of the high? There are two ways of making the D that will help you. Uh, ignore the ring finger, it's doing nothing, it's on vacation, it's having a wee holiday. You do these, just like I showed you. And then you use your little finger, at least that's what it works for me. If your ring finger does it, fair enough, on where the D would normally go, that on the B string, on the D note. If you are a finger style guy, you've got, or gal, you've got to learn how to do that and then to go to do the D seventh all right but we're not doing those tonight simply all right you know there are only a couple of variations on this whole thing
do an extra couple on the G. So when you're going out of the verse to the, so darling, darling, stand by me. And that's the only variation there is. There's one extra uh, beat or two at the very, very last whenever, um, so we'll do the last chorus here and then into the way that he ends the song, all right? Whenever you're in trouble, won't you stand? See, you get a break out there and you get to do a, a simple up and down, right? Remember, if your hand's getting all sweaty and nervous here, seriously, just go put go put your hands under the faucet for a second and then shake them dry. And that's the, don't have to hit your guitar with it. That's how loose your hand should be on this up and down stuff, just. The lesson is yours. I get my um, tabs most of the time, 90 something percent of the time, from ultimateguitar.com. I have no financial interest in it. In fact, I pay to be a member. It just seems to be the best one place clearing house for them. I've not done any of the extras that they do, you know, about how to post your own stuff and, you know, here's a little video on how to play. I've never done that sort of thing, but it's there if you want it. You can get the tabs, they're very easy. You can transpose up and down in the morning. I sing it here. This time of night, I would generally have to move it up here. My voice gets weaker through the D. That's what happens when you're a very old man. Enjoy, play your guitar.